It's been a wet weekend in Toledo, Ohio, but we are ready to go racing with the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards. <laughs> 2017 ARCA is here, not far away from going green in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menard. This is a buckle up and hang on time here. Trouble already. Contact, hard into the wall. Well, it is gonna get interesting and I think we're in store for a good one. No and trouble. there we have a big one in the back. Through the trial. Checkered flag! The drivers are strapping into their cars and we are about set to throw the green flag and begin the Menards 200 here on FS1. It's been a wet weekend all around the Toledo, Ohio area. Temperatures 75 degrees, but rain has been passing through the area throughout the course of the day. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside Phil Parsons. The sun is not out bright yet, Phil, but it has at least stopped raining. The track is dry and we're about set to get this one underway. But it, that weather is going to affect the strategy, isn't it? Well, I think it is. Even without the threat of weather, we have a, a lot of strategy here in this race. These guys have two right side uh, sets of tires in the pits as well as one left side set. So the ideal time to put those first set of right sides on is around lap 60 and then around lap 120 to put your four tires on because tires mean so much here. But with the threat of rain, these guys may say we're only going to race to halfway to lap 100. Maybe we should put the four tires on on lap 60 or 70, something like that. So that's where the crew chiefs are really going to earn their money trying to figure out this weather. Well, and the weather impacted earlier in the weekend, too, with practice, no qualifying. Some of the guys did get out on track for some pretty decent laps. Who did you think looked good with what they got? Well, most of the talk in the garage area was that there was a handful of cars that really excelled in practice yesterday. Zane Smith, that 55 car right there, he finished sixth at Salem, and he's he's got a pretty good starting spot in seventh here in one of Venturini Motorsports is Toyotas. Also, we've got a new driver here. This is Tyler Rorick. He won the Glass City 200, the outlaw late model race here at Toledo last fall. Mason Mitchell said he was very, very fast, really has a lot of no local knowledge of this racetrack. There's Christian Eckes. He finished third earlier this year at Nashville in the ARCA Racing Series event, another one of Venturini's cars, and he will start on the front row by virtue of that practice time. But the odds-on favorite, I think, from the talk in the garage area is this 77 car of Dalton Sargent. He won at Salem the last time we were on a short track, and he was very, very fast yesterday. Well, all of these drivers look to these folks right here in the grandstands as a big part of why they are allowed to go racing. And that's the story of this week's General Tire Driver Profile. Interaction with fans, in my eyes, is very important. We've got a lot, a lot of plans this year, a lot of live videos and live feed from uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. So we're, uh, we're definitely gonna be very interactive with our fans on, on the social platform and here in the garage area also. We've been involved in several different competitions involving social media like Most Popular Driver. They've really got me over the finish line. If it wasn't for them, there's a lot of awards I wouldn't have won. Fans are of the utmost importance to me and, and anybody else in racing. We get to make a living doing what we love because of the fans. So any support that we see from social media through the TV coverage, it's a great feeling. You're the reason that they keep coming to the track. That's a deep, special meaning to me and, and most of the other drivers in the garage. If it wasn't for the fans, we wouldn't be here or we wouldn't have any of this. So, I mean, fans are the number one priority. Jim Trito will be covering pit road for us today. And just before Dalton Sargent put his helmet on, Jim had a chance to speak with him. Well, guys, indeed, Dalton Sargent's had speed at every track this year. And more importantly, that mock qualifying run in practice, that helps set the field because we didn't have qualifying laps. You get the start on the front row, Dalton. How important that is it here at Toledo Speedway? Yeah, it was uh, definitely really important. Uh, but, you know, I couldn't have done it without the uh, the help of all the guys at Cunningham Motorsports giving us a great 77 big time Ford. And uh, overall, just, you know, really looking forward to, to uh, today. Hopefully uh, we can uh, finish where we start. But um, we got some good momentum coming into Toledo Speedway. Finished second here last year. Uh, so. I definitely learned a couple things, uh, you know, that some of the rookie drivers that are here, maybe they don't know. So uh, maybe that'll give me a little bit of an advantage. And then um, 
at the same time, uh, coming off a little bit of momentum, winning the last short track race at Salem. So I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, at the same time, I, uh, I'm pretty happy to have Matt Kogan riding on with me, on board with me today. Um, you know, I just uh, want to give my condolences to, uh, you know, his whole family. Um, you know, just the, the whole racing community is, a, is one big family. And I got to meet Matt uh, when I was running some NASCAR K&N stuff and as well as the truck stuff and kick it with him. And, you know, definitely just all around a great guy and um, just really sorry and sad to hear the, uh, the tragic news. Thank you, Dalton. We wish you well in the race today. Thank you. One of our own last weekend. Many of the teams in the ARCA Racing Series garage are running these decals today in remembrance of Matt Kogan. Matt was a cameraman covering multiple racing series, including ARCA. His incredible footage was seen on a daily basis across various platforms. Besides his dedication to his work, Matt will be remembered for his easy laugh, bright smile, and for being a great friend and father. Matt had just celebrated his beautiful daughter Ella's sixth birthday before his life was tragically cut short. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends. Matt Kogan was just 25 years old. Welcome back to Toledo, Ohio. Take a look at our general tire starting grid. It's up there in the hat, as we call it, across the top of the screen. See Dalton Sargent right there on the pole. Eckes is going to be right alongside him in this scene right here, Phil. Pretty happy to see that cars going around the racetrack. Yeah, we're going to ride along with some guys. Gus Dean will be carrying our Valvoline on board. That's a Greek cooling Toyota, and Gus will start from the 11th spot. Riley Herbst in the 18. That's a NOS Energy UFC Jim Toyota. He's got the UFC Jim on board camera. Yeah, Austin Terrier will carry our general tire on board. That's the Midwest Logistics Systems Ford for Kenny Schrader, our Daytona winner, and he starts ninth. And Christian Eckes comes from Middletown, New York. He's in a Toyota as well, the New York bus sales machine. And we're green from Toledo. Fighting for the line, coming down into the corner. The 77 jumping out into the early lead, Dalton Sargent. Yeah, great start for Dalton Sargent. Started this race from the pole by virtue of his fastest speed in yesterday's practice session. See some side-by-side -side racing back there. That's Vinnie Miller, the 41, the first car stuck on the outside. And Riley Herbst in that group as well in the 18. 41 on the outside here. Vinnie Miller out of Michigan in his Toyota. It's a Joe Gibbs Toyota that Riley Herbst is driving there, the 18 car, and he gets up front of the 41 of Miller. This is a very fast half mile. When you talk to drivers who have been here, that is one of the things they will tell you. It has been here for a long time. Mark has raced here for many years, but this is a very, very fast half mile. And Ralph, it's relatively flat, too. Turns one and two are banked from 12 to 13 degrees, and, and about 11 degrees over in three and four, but they have a lot of speed here. These relatively short straightaways, but they still keep a lot of momentum going through these corners. Watching from our Valvoline on board with Gus Dean, and this is one of those short tracks that drivers talk about as a place where you can earn your stripes. You can learn a lot about racing these big, heavy stock cars as our leaders are already getting into traffic. Watching the 22 now, Shane Lee out of Newton, North Carolina, the big time four. Yeah, Shane Lee is very, very good here. I was talking to some of the guys in the garage here, and they said he was almost as good as that 77 of Dalton Sargent, who was our fastest car in practice yesterday. The lapping has already begun. And these guys would like to run right down on the bottom of the racetrack, but you see the lap cars down there now. It's a good shot of the 33 of Tyler Dipple. Tyler ran fourth at Salem last year. Just a limited number of Arca Racing Series starts, but uh, they talked about that car being very, very good too. That's a teammate to Gus Dean in the 32 car for Kevin Sapinski's Wintron Racing. He's holding down fourth place right now behind the 22 machine to Shane Lee. after this delay these guys would be really anxious but really really clean thus far here on lap number nine and the arca officials thrilled to see that because you can see the dark clouds off to the side of the racetrack off the back side of the front straightaway here there's still more rain in the area so as many laps as we can get in the better the quicker yeah here's christian Neckis right here running in the second spot really a nice job this year 
He won the Snowball Derby last December down in Pensacola, Florida. So he knows how to do it on a short track. See the 15 machine. Like you said, you're talking about there, tucked in behind the 77 is Sergeant. Getting around the outside of Mike Basham in the 34. But the Basham's longtime competitors in the Arca Series. Yeah, along with his dad, Daryl, they've, they've got a combined three or four hundred starts. Mike did a nice job last year, feeling Daryl had a little bit of health issues, so Mike ran most of the season, finished in the top ten in points. Things starting to tighten up a little bit here in our battle for the lead, and they got a lot of traffic in front of them. Yeah, they're actually getting some pretty good cars. There's Tommy Prater, the nine car right there. That Dalton Sargent is making way around. Tommy was a top five in points last year. On board with Christian, the New York bus sales on board camera. And even, oh, oh and already one car in the wall, the 41 of Vinnie Miller. Significant damage to the right rear of that car. Yeah, the ARC officials taking a look at the racetrack to make sure there's no debris on it. They would love to keep this race green. And it looks like Vinnie Miller's back up to speed even with all that damage. Remember, most of these cars are that new composite body car, Ralph, and they're very durable. Let's take a look at it and see what we can. Oh, there were three wide there on the entrance to one. Yeah, it looked like Mike Basham in the 34 was going to go around Con Nicolopoulos in the zero, and Vinny jumped to the outside to give him room and just got out a little bit out into the loose stuff. It's around Mike Munior as he continues. You can see there's those big blocks up on the outside of the corner, and he just clipped the tail end of one of those and part of the cement. See Zane Miller there, the 55 car. He's on the move. He's been able to get by the 78 of Tyler Rorick. There's Riley Herbst now right on the back bumper of that 78 of Rorick. Yeah, that's all fifth, sixth, seventh, just on the back end of the top 10 right here. Leaders continuing. They've worked their way through traffic, and the traffic didn't slow them down. Here comes a 55. Smith inside the driver out of Southern California trying to make the move on Shane Lee and will complete the pass. Yeah, we talked about him at the very top of the show. One of the fast cars in practice didn't really get the practice fast practice lap that he would have liked to have gotten, but a very, very fast car now up into the fourth spot. And Shane's not able to get down as low as he'd like to, I think, here, Phil. And it might cost him another position if he's not careful because it looks like Rorg has them all lined up here. Yeah, a lot of local knowledge with that 78 car. We talked about him winning the big Glass City 200 last fall. Now he's going to have to go around the outside of Bobby Garrett. Look like at three wide for position. Coming off a turn four and across the start finish line. And you got to get it settled down before you get into one because we saw a couple of laps ago. Didn't work out too well for the 41 of Vinnie Miller. Yeah, Harrison Burton, the 28 car, was inside of that three wide battle. He got hung up behind the five of Bobby Gerhardt. Lost a couple spots. Look like the back end of the 22 is trying to kick out a little bit going into the corner there. He does look a little bit loose right now, and that leaves the door open for the 28 of Harrison Burton to get by him on the inside. Yeah, he just cannot get that machine down to the bottom side of the racetrack, and they're all just rolling by him. Yeah, Paul Andrews would like to get that car to pit road and make some adjustments on that 22 for Shane Lee. Well, and we've talked about how fast this racetrack is for a big half mile, and you can see we're already 25 laps into the scheduled 200. If it stays green, we can knock the laps down pretty fast. Yeah, without a doubt here. They run, run this thing at about 16 or 17 seconds a lap, even in race conditions. And right now, uh, everybody's doing a great job keeping it clean. 26 laps now in the books, and Dalton Sargent has led every single one of them. We're coming right back for more of the Menards 200. Back here in Toledo, you know, there are 18 different racetracks on the schedule this year with the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards, and Toledo getting their one and only visit. It also happens to be the hometown of the series. Time now to take a look at our Scotts Brands Rookie Challenge. Harrison Burton in the 28, Thad Moffat, the grandson of the legendary Richard Petty, 
competing here as well today. Some good lineage there in our Scott's rookie challenge. Yeah. Yeah, both of them very successful by the wheel. Very young, just 16 years of age. In fact, that now just reached the point where he can actually start driving. The track. <laughs> he said his crew guys used to give him uh, give him a hard time when he couldn't drive to the racetrack, but he could drive on the racetrack. Watching the 55 year, Zane Smith. Yeah, Zane's lost a couple spots here recently. Harrison Burton and and Rorig have both been able to get by Zane Smith. He's back now to the seventh spot. That's Chad Finley, the 51. Remember, Chad won the first short track race of the year at Nashville for his first ever Arca Racing Series win. Finley working that inside in that white and black numeral number 51. He was exactly in the right spot there coming off of four. You want to dip those left sides down below the pavement. If the grass wasn't so wet, you might go through the grass a little bit. See the sparks fly from that 51 car. Bill, we're also starting to inch our way towards the completion of the first quarter of this race. So you talked about the beginning of the show, crew chiefs and what their thoughts are going to be. Uh, clean and green so far all the way maybe to the end of this first quarter. Got to start thinking about that strategy somewhat. Yeah, I think, again, they would like to stop around lap 60, but they probably would stop as early as 45 or so. So you know that's on their minds right now. They're watching the lap times and see how much these tires are falling off. Tucked in this group, the 32 of Dean running at 11. Let's touch base with Jim Trainer with more on the story of the 22 of Shane Lee, Jim. Yeah, Ralph, it's his first time here at the racetrack. They did come and test, but the driver told me before the race, I don't know what to expect early on. What he has now is a car that's very loose on entry. Paul Andrews is reminding him to get his entry proper, maybe turn the front brakes on, try to work through with his first-year driver, this pairing of Shane Lee full-time in this year at Cunningham. And Paul Andrews, the car's not able to stay down to the bottom, loose on entry, Phil. That could be a handful through, all the way through the corners here at Toyota Speedway. Jim, it sure could, and, and really, Shane's been solid this year. He's only had one finish outside the top five, and that was 12th in Nashville. But we have a long way to go here. Again, weather permitting, we have a yeah. long way to go in this race. And we've got a lot of weather around, as you can see it in the skies. It's about everywhere you look. See Gus Dean drive underneath the 52 of Terrio. That's Gus in the blue and white, number 32. That's for 10th place, Phil. Yeah, that's his, That's the 22 Shane Lee right in front of him. This is the Valvoline onboard. Gus trying to break up into the top 10. Jim was talking about how the driver in the 22 there, Lee, and a first time driver at this track, trying to get some experience here. A lot of guys, when they come to a new racetrack like this, try to ease into it, build up their speed. Well, they didn't get a lot of practice. That makes it very tough because, as we've seen already in the racing here, you have to be aggressive in your approach to this trip. Yeah, you certainly do. But the thing that's working in Shane Lee's favor is he's from Newton, North Carolina, which means he raced Hickory a bunch. Yep. And this race track races a lot like Hickory. It's not quite, uh, Hickory's not as fast as this racetrack, but they race alike. Another track you can earn your stripes at for sure. It's pretty wide right there, coming off a two, even though one of those cars is the slower machine in the three of Earnhardt. And that's Bo Lamastis, the 42. Looks like Shane Lee is finally going to work his way underneath Lamastis in that 42 car, and he's going to bring the rest of them with him. I think Shane Lee right now would love this thing to stay green for a long time. He's starting to find his rhythm. He looks like he's getting a little more comfortable. It certainly is here. He's now, now he's finally made his way around. Oh, he's got trouble. That could bring out a yellow. The 69 going around. Nick Ogden out of Kentucky. And we get our first caution of the day. Yeah, now the crew chiefs have to make a decision, Ralph. We're about 45 laps into this thing here. Is this too early to put those two right side tires on? I think I think we're going to see some pit stops. See, Riley Herbst, the 18, is just going to get to the back of him just a slight amount, it gets him loose, and then he has to get off the throttle, and around he goes. Here's the onboard from the 18 of Riley. It's closed up on him quick. Yeah, the initial bump wasn't much, but then it, it got him out of the throttle, and then he pushed him on around. The 
this Crew is Nick's Chief's second start. Those... Excuse me, yeah, yeah, second right. start of the year. Crew Chief's all thinking about it right now, aren't they? Absolutely. And all it's all going to be predicated on what the 77 adult sergeant does. What what does Chad Bryan do? Does he bring him in this early? If he does, that'll probably bring a bunch of these guys in with him. But how about Harrison Burton now, all the way up to the second spot in the 28 car? Well, if you're behind Dalton, you're pretty much going to have to do what he does, don't you think? I think so, too. It's with this kind of strategy, with these six tires that these guys have in the pits, we're getting a report that we think the leader, the 77, is going to come to pit road, and that's the way he's headed right now. And yeah. it looks like he's got the entire field in his, uh, in his tire tracks. You see there is an inside racetrack here, much smaller than the half mile that we're racing on. Very wet pit road. These guys are really taking their time. Wet pit road as well. It's going to be a challenge. We're going to head down trackside. Jimmy's headed your way for his first stop of the day. Creeping down at 20 miles per hour is crew chief Chad Bryant said we need to put on two tires because track position means too much. The rain is perhaps coming, so what we need to do, bring it in, take two tires, be as efficient as we can. No other changes for Sultan Sergeant. Two right side general tires and away. Boy, just about got in trouble. Just about got blocked by his teammate, but he did make it out to pit road. The 15 of Christian Eckes will be the second car off pit road, and here comes Raleigh Herbst in the 18 car. That 20 mile an hour pit lane speed, a good idea on a very wet pit road here this afternoon at Toledo. Closing in on the first fourth of this race being in the books. We're coming right back for more from Toledo, the Menards 200. Back here in Toledo, Ohio, taking a look at our Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge point standings. This is the third short track race of the year. And right now, Kyle Weatherman is on top of those point standings. Dalton Sargent closing in, and he's leading here today, so he could certainly make up some ground. Yeah, Kyle Weatherman did not run this race. He's only running a limited schedule this year. But these are the races that make up the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge. And what a disparity in racetracks. Yeah. We have mild dirts, and we have little short tracks like here at Toledo and the big 7 8 oval in Iowa. You can see we've already run at the fairgrounds in Nashville, and then over in Salem, Indiana. Another very festival. Legendary short oh, track yeah. this calendar. Look at Winchester, and of course, we talked about the two dirt tracks. It's one of the things that makes running in this ARCA Racing Series presented by Menard so special. You get to try out so many different forms of race track. Yeah, that, you're certainly all around now. The truck series rivals that, the fact that we have a road course in Canada and we have the dirt track at yeah. Eldora. But this, this ARCA series has been doing that for years and years and years. You just saw Riley Herbst. He's in uh, Ford. Christian, Christian. Yeah, right now running in the second spot, exactly where he started. Good pit work by his guys to gain him a spot on pit road. Getting ready to go green. Lined up. Sergeant has led every lap as we are at the quarter mark here. waves and we're underway. Down the back stretch and into three. There's that 22 of Lee really finding his rhythm just before that yellow came out. Here's Terrio on the outside in the 52 car. Close, close racing here. Chad Finley, the 51, right on the back bumper of the 22 of Lee. The 22's rear end still doesn't look planted the way he wants, and Terrio keeping him tight down there on the bottom. It's not letting him get the room he really needs there. Yeah, he looks pretty free right now, and it's really struggled for forward bite as we see Finley go through the grass to make the pass on Lee. There's a 78 of, of Roaring right there. That's the biggest problem Lee has had. Once he gets stuck on the outside like that, where his car is actually running a little bit better for him, he has more room to work with. Everybody else comes by on the bottom. Yeah, there's Benny Miller, the 41, had that earlier incident, but stayed on the racetrack, stayed on the lead lap, and making the pass on Lee. And there's Harrison Burton. Harrison was running second when we had pit stops as he tries to get underneath his teammate, Benny Miller, in the 41. 
Harrison pushing deeper inside the top 10. He can get around Miller here. That'll give him eighth position, and he does. His dad's here. I'm sure Jeff is happy to see that move. Yeah, absolutely. Parents very much involved in Harrison's racing career, obviously. Another good run early on for Tyler Dippel, the 33 car. He's a former winner in the k &N Series. He won last year in the k &N Series, running again full-time this year. He's fighting things out with Riley Herbst here in that NOS 18, squabbling over third position. Yeah, he was third in points in the k &N Series back in 2015, and he won his race at Mobile, Alabama. Riley comes from another big racing family. This one from out west, but it's an off-road racing family. Quite a bit different than this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But just as legendary in that form of motorsport. Yeah, Riley ran in the k &N Series last year, had 15 starts, and had seven top five finishes. Did a nice job out there driving for Bill McAnally. Already on lap 60. Boy, the laps really click off here, don't they? They sure do. So now as a crew chief, you may, you were forced to make your one call already because Sergeant pretty much made it for you. So now what do you think? I, I think you want to wait again around till around lap 120, 130, something like that. But if the caution comes out at lap 100 and Dalton Sergeant brings that car down pit road, do you follow him or do you want to say, let me save that set of tires for later on? Watching the battle on the right over here. That's, that's good. I told you that Kim and yeah. Jeff were very much oh, involved yeah. with Harrison's racing. That's crew. Oh, caution's oh, out of the racetrack. Caution track. is out, and Kim saw it too. Yeah, that's Marty Lindley right there, the crew chief, who got the car into the yeah. end of the blocks. That's Thad Moffat, Richard Petty's grandson, making his second start. You can see the damage to the rear of that Performance Plus motor oil car. Another 16 year old. That really does a nice job. He won the Southeast Limited Late Model Championship last year as a 15-year-old. Can you imagine the damage to that car had those foam blocks not been there, though, Ralph? Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, the Oswego Speedway made the foam blocks so famous, and it really works up there at the Steel Palace. And many other tracks have thought about doing the same thing, Toledo one of them, and it definitely makes a big difference. Now, there's a lot of damage to that car, but with this new composite flange fit body, he could just unbolt that rear bumper, unbolt the deck lid, probably fix that quarter panel. Those guys could have that thing fixed in about a half a day at the shop, but right now he's going to have to get that deck lid and the rear spoiler back up on that car. Yeah. They came up here, got a little testing in, and uh, one of the things he was most interested in when he got up here was what the schedule for the Mud Hens be. Yeah, <laughs> the Toledo Mud Hens. Yeah. I've been to the Toledo Mud Hidden Games before. Well, if you're coming to the Glass City, you pretty much have to. Yeah, it's the Tiger Triple A team. You know I'm going to be there for the Mud Hens. There's no doubt about it. Don Sargent has led every lap so far. 63 of them are in the books. And we'll be right back to Toledo for more. Next Sunday on Fox, the Monster Energy Cup Series heats up under the lights in Charlotte for the longest race of the season. It's a Coca-Cola 600 at 530 Eastern on Fox. They added the stage to the Coca-Cola 600. There'll be four 100 lap stages now. Well, Thad Moffat is uh, behind pit wall. Let's go to Jim for an update. Oh, to tape up the rear damage on the rear of the number 46 performance plus Ford. Now they're actually under hood behind the wall trying to figure out if they have a leak. There, it looks like they're right behind the radiator could be an oil line leak issue. They're working on the engine compartment now. I can see obvious damage on the body on the front and rear, but Moffat trying to get back on track now with a motor issue after that spin in turn three. Phil, you noticed as we were in break, we caught a glimpse of uh, Thad's car under the hood when they lifted it. You saw some oil under there. Yeah, there was definitely some oil there. No, and don't know whether maybe that precipitated this situation. Had he had an oil leak, he might have got in his own oil, and that's why he backed into the into the foam blocks. So Dalton Sargent has literally led all 69 laps. You can see some raindrops on our camera lens down near turn one. As we said, there's been rain in and around the area all weekend long. There's been a little bit of moisture falling out of the sky during this yellow. 
they've got everything cleaned up over in turn one. It looks like uh, the rain has let up enough that we can get back to race. Yeah, let's do it. These guys are chomping at the bit to get back out here. Dalton Sargent has led all but two laps. Christian Eckes was is being credited with leading two laps. Here we go. Green flag. It's a great jump by the 15 of Eckes, but the 77 fights right back on the inside. You would think that inside line would have a significant advantage the way that things have been running so far today, but look at Eckes with the move around the outside. And then right now, we talked about the very top of the show. These guys may be thinking that they're racing to lap 100, Ralph, with those sprinkles in the air. Yeah, and he pushed pretty hard to get there, and you could see it looked like Sargent lost the front end of the car a little bit coming off the two. Maybe things are not as good as they were early on in this race for Dalton Sargent. Yeah, that's a great battle right there for the fifth spot. That's Chad Finley, the white number 51, Tyler Dipple, the 33. There's Harrison Burton, Tyler Roark, also side by side right there and a battle for about the seventh spot. Yep, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, all in that group back to Rorick. Burton on the outside. Eckes made it work up there. Can Harrison make it work? Looks like he's gonna lose a spot and he wants the bottom. Remember Harrison was talking about uh, loving the fact that he gets to run some, some live pit stops. We were talking in the garage yesterday. He's already had one of those so far, but right now that 51 of Chad Finley, Jim is up to the fourth spot. Well, guys, he started back in 12th because he did not even do a mock run yesterday. He knew how good his race car was on race tires. Proving it here, he came with everyone else, changed two tires, got the same track position for this family team out of Michigan. They are doing a wonderful job, and Chad has bumped and run on the 52 of Austin Terrier, the point leader. So, Finley showing short track prowess at a track he's run about 10 late model races since his ARCA debut here back in 2009. Finley out of St. John's, Michigan, and that auto value airlift company back Chevrolet. Boy, a great move that time, Ralph, by Harrison Burton. He just put his nose underneath the, the 78 of Rorick on exit of number four, got up to his door, and it was able to beat him down into the corner. Here comes Zane Smith, the 55 car, going to do the same thing on Rorick. Zane in that black 55 with the white numbers on the doors. Ooh, trouble Looks right like problems front of him. coming off the corner. That's Two cars around is going to bring out the caution again, including that's the 33 machine involved in there. That's Dipple who was running up in the top five. Yeah, I think they were lapping the 06 of Mark Munier. Yeah, that's Munier right there, driver out of Louisville, Kentucky. Tough, tough break, though, for Tyler Dipple in the 33. So Munier's going to back his machine up. We haven't seen well, Dipple's roll in a little bit. And Thad Moffat looks like he's ready to come back into the race. Yeah, oh, flames coming out of Dipple's car. Coming out of the cowl area. He's going to crawl out. Smart move. Get him out of there quickly. Yeah, we had a we had a fire yesterday in practice with Brian Finney's car, and it actually damaged that car too much to to uh, even make the attempt at racing today. But you see the Arca racing officials right on top of this situation, and they get that fire put out pretty quickly. Tyler Dipple out of Wall Kill, New York, the Wintron Racing Toyota. Had a solid run going, is running up in the top, top, top 10 the entire race, but it looked like had some sort of an issue as they were trying to lap the Munier's car. Yeah, he was top five at the moment when that happened. We well, can see the heat on the windscreen. Yeah, it started, started melting that, uh, that laminated Lexan. But he's okay. and. That's what's important. Frustrated, of course. Let's take a look at this, Phil, and see if we can figure out what happened. Oh, there it is right there. The 06 got loose, overcorrected, and got into the 33 of Dipple. That was from the 52 of Austin Terrio's onboard camera. So you can see the frustration all over Tyler Dipple. Third caution of the afternoon here in Toledo. Scheduled for 200 laps here today. 79 completed. 
Tyler Dipple's day is done here at the Menards 200. It was the L oh, caution on the racetrack. Yep. Once again, fourth one of the day. Boy, we did the first part of the afternoon clean and green. In fact, we went 45 laps green, and it's Con Nicolopoulos, who was a driver that they had all worked past. Con finds himself stuck in the infield, and you can imagine how wet that is. Yeah, we've had a lot of rain here over the last couple days, and unfortunately, with the slick tires, he's not able to get that car out of the grass. It shouldn't take much, though, to get that car pulled out and get back to racing. Good look at the general tile short track radials. There he goes. Maybe get her going. Con's up front here in the blue zero and probably had a little bit of help. Some of these lead lap cars, they know that the rain is coming or potentially coming and it's time to go. That, that's going to be a little hard. Keep, keep the wheel spinning there, Con. Good news for you. They're doing a better job at it than I thought they were. Yeah, they really are. There they go. Yeah. Now he's got to clean up those general tires a little bit, which actually happens pretty fast here on the dry surface like this, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. By the time he gets to the next corner, those tires will have all the moisture off them. So 10 away from that halfway mark now. Yeah, the magic lap 100. But we've also had 21 laps for caution in this first 100. Yeah, we had, we, as you mentioned, we went so long under green, I thought this thing was going to play out. But, uh, you know, when you get lapping, starts happening, and then we get close to halfway, and the rain's coming, then, you know, business picks up a little bit. Let's take a look at our general tire track facts for this afternoon here at Toledo Speedway. This half mile, as we said, first race here in 1963. Imagine that, Frank Kimmel with nine wins. Nine of his 80 wins came right here at Toledo Speedway. And you know, I was looking back through the records, Ralph, and, I, and I've been to a lot of these races here, the ARCA Racing Series events. My brother won three times here, and the Bowser family won between them 11 times. Bobby won five, his uncle Tom won four, and his dad Jack won twice here. So 11 times for the Bowser family. And uh, again, my brother BP won here three times. Three. And you actually raced here yourself. I raced here I actually I, on the little track we were talking about, where they little run the little brother, little racetrack. Yeah, little little brother, little racetrack. Exactly. That's a good shot of the, of the of the track inside the half mile track here at Toledo Speedway. Well, a scary moment for Tyler Dipple. Let's learn more from Jim Trado. And Tyler has come from the infield and ambulance, and Tyler, glad to see you're okay. What happened on the racetrack that caused the spin? Ah, uh, just a lapper that was 10 laps down to lap 80, you know, just the guy was passing him on the top. He just drove right down on the apron and just spun himself right out. I mean, there's, I don't even know why he was out there. He just probably wasn't even going minimum speed. It's just really, really frustrating. Just the guys worked so hard just to get this deal together for me. And we were running top five whole race there. It just, uh. Man, I hate it for them, all the work that the crew guys put in, my mom and dad, all the people that support me back at home. It's just, uh, it's just tough. I don't know why it caught on fire there, because we didn't really hit anything. It just stalled, tried to fire back up. I don't really know what that was about, but it's just frustrating. Wrecked by a lapper, that's like five laps down. No really, no reason for it. Thanks, that's Tyler Dipple. Glad to see you're okay. Tough afternoon. Yeah, it sure is. Coming back, closing in on that halfway mark here at the Menards 200 from Toledo. Stay with us on FS1. Looks like we're getting ready to go back to green here at the Menards 200. The ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards. Field lined up. Dalton Sargent on the inside, Eckes on the outside. And that's been a fun battle on these restarts. You see how Dalton Sargent has moved up the racetrack he, he's right in the middle groove right now. Actually, it would be the outside groove normally and a great restart by Dalton Sargent and allows Chad Finley to drive right up beside the 15 of Eckes. Sargent arcs it off into the corner. Eckes fighting on the outside, trying to hang on to second place. And these guys know that we're only five laps away from the halfway point of this race. There was some, definitely some moisture on the windshield. 
Chad Finley's now going to grab that second spot. Eckes pulls in behind. On board. Riding along with Christian Eckes. New York bus sales on board camera. He's either been leading or running in second most of the afternoon. Now finds himself in third in a battle here as well. That's 55 is Smith. 52, Tyrio. That's a great side-by-side -side battle. Six points with their fighting over. Got a side-by-side -side battle right behind them. That's Benny Miller, the 41 on the outside. Dean and the, in the 32. Yeah, Gus Dean, the 32 on the inside. See all the damage from that earlier incident for Benny Miller, but it doesn't appear to have slowed that car down. Anymore. Nice pass by Gus Dean. Let's move Gus up to the eighth spot. Remember, Gus was our winner at Talladega last year. Gus had a great run. Last short track we had at Salem, he finished in the runner-up spot. There's Natalie Decker, the 25. We talked about her a few moments ago. Shane Lee, the 22. She slipped back to 10th, Bill. She's trying to get that momentum going again. And there's Rorig in the 78. Remember, he made a pit stop for some adjustments a caution or so ago. So Shane Lee all over the back of the 25. And Natalie Decker moves to the inside. It looked like he got her a little loose coming up off the corner there, and she did a good job keeping the car headed straight. I don't know if she's going to be able to hold a position on that outside lane. You see Rorick with those left sides down below the surface. 101 laps in the books, and we have crossed halfway. Shane Lee right now holds down that 10th spot. Tyler Rorick right now in 11th. Remember, he's fighting his way back from making that pit stop. And getting in that window now, if the caution flag were to come out, if the guys don't think this race is going to be rain shortened, it'd be time to think about putting those four tires on, Ralph. Riley Herbst has had a good afternoon up in the top five. He can get those new tires. What would it do to the performance of his car? Mm -hmm. What you would like is to have new tires and nobody else have them, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But what a good battle for third. Harrison Burton now on the move back up to third around the 15 of Eckes. Well, you can really see him fighting that wheel, too, as he came up off the corner. He's got a lapper to deal with here. Constant traffic on this fast half mile here today at Toledo. Yeah, this is actually Harrison's second ARCA Racing Series start. He ran the race in Iowa last year, had a good third place finish there, so. Young man has done a lot of racing this year, a lot of success, a couple K&N wins earlier this year. What do you like about Harrison's driving style? Do you see it as similar to his father, Jeff? I think very similar. Jeff was always a very smart racer, and Harrison seems to be exactly the same way. He stays in the game. He's had five K&N races this year, and he's been in the top five each and every race. To me, one of the things with Jeff was always his smoothness, and Harrison seems to be doing a good job of that as well. Totally let's, agree. Let's learn more about Harrison Burton, the driver of that 28 from Jim down there track side. I'm going to caution guys, but Harrison oh, Burton yeah. lost track position, made it all back up from a stall on pit road on his first pit stop. We're under caution. Jim, that's going to be caution number five. That's Munior in the 0-6 and the 34 up along the outside of the wall there, Mike Basham, who we talked about earlier. And you can see the damage to the left side of Mike's car from more than likely some contact there. And I think now we're, we've completed 107 laps. I think we have to think about putting those four tires on, Ralph. Yeah, you know, the weather's been holding. And if we go green, as we saw, we went 45 laps pretty quickly early on. So you can't risk too much here, can you? Yeah, I think the only reason these guys would stay on the racetrack is, is, you know, they're looking at radar as well. And if they think the rain is imminent, then they may stay on the racetrack for, for track position. If not, if they think this race is going to go the distance to lap 200, then I want to be able to get my tires now. Even if somebody wants to come in 20 laps later and have a little bit fresher tires, I want the track position. So the real question is, did you get the free weather app or did you spend 20 bucks and get a really good one? I think most of these guys probably have the free weather app like I do. <laughs> yeah. So that being the case, you probably do whatever Dalton's are. <laughs> exactly. Hoping he got the better one. Let's, let's see here if he moves down towards the inside. See Chad Finley's moving down towards Is the he, inside. Oh, he's faking. Yeah. Who's going to fake it and who's going to really do it? Eckes is coming. Oh, oh not he, the last. He hit the orange cone. Oh. 
Benny Miller is going to make the trip down yeah. pit road, and that could really pay dividends if this race was to go green for a long time. Wow. 92 laps to go. So now you pretty much have said, okay, I'm not going to do it now, but if there's one more caution, I'm going to have to go. I think so, too. And, but I like the strategy by Vinny Miller. Actually, I'm not sure he's going to put tires on. Maybe just making an adjustment to that 41 car. Remember, we had some damage from that earlier bout with the uh, foam blocks. He was running in the top 10 and ninth. Pairs being made. Strategy has been played out. Let's see if it works when we return. Back here at Toledo, Ohio, let's take a look at our Protect Plus mid-race recap. Nick Hignan, the 69 car, gets turned around from the bumper of the 18 of Riley Herbst. Just a little bit of bump right here. Nick gets out of the throttle, and around he goes. Problems here for Thad Moffitt, too, in the 46. He got up into the foam blocks down in turn one. He is back in the race. Tough break for Tyler Dippel, one of our top 10 cars. A lap car gets into him, turns him around. Before he is able to get that car going again, it actually catches on fire, and that will end his day. Had some really good battles on restarts, and Sargent in the 77 and Eckes in the 15 have been two of the most fighting for those top spot on those restarts. And on that one, you saw Sargent get the spot away as Eckes got a little bit loose. 89 laps to go. 15 cars on the lead lap. Two different cars have led, and that's been Eckes and Sargent. And they've swapped the lead five times between them. Let's go back down track side. Here's Jim Trado. Driver Dalton Sargent, guys, and he said track position is too important. That's why we didn't come. But keep in mind, the last three times that the 77 restarted on the front row, it was Christian Eckes, and they were really going at it. The worry now for Chad Bryan, he just told me, he said, I'm not as worried about the 51 of Finley. The 28 is coming. So they're more worried about what Harrison Burton may have left on this run behind them as they get ready for this restart. Jim, are you kind of getting the feeling like we are that if there is another caution, that's when everybody's going to come take those other tires? You know, I think track position is so important. They don't have to take those tires, Ralph, and they have plenty of fuel to go the distance, but I did not see a whole lot of guns going on that most recent caution. And a lot of guys are saying the leader comes, we come. So the 77 dictating thinks track position. At this point, I think, Ralph, is too important. Yeah, this is a great opportunity, though, for somebody to gamble. If if the guys up near Dalton Sargent will follow him in, maybe the guys at the tail end of the top ten say, let's gamble, let's get our four tires, maybe this race goes green the rest of the way, and we can steal one. Yeah. Right now, 88 to go as we get set to go back to green. How will this restart play out? Sargent's been battling with Eckes. This time, he's got to fight Finley on the outside. Remember, Finley's already a winner this year in the short track race at Nashville. When he got a good start, too. Yeah, somebody did not go in the middle of the field, and it clogged things up, but Finley has the lead. He goes right around him on the outside and takes over the top spot. There's the 28 car that Chad Bryant was talking about, Harrison Burton. He's in the third spot now, right behind that 77 of Sargent. And Eckes slips back some more. Herbst working on the backside of him as they fight over fourth, but Finley's going to take his turn at the point here at Toledo. Great three-way battle right now. Harrison Burton, the 28 car, able to stay right with these front two. Remember when he made his pit stop, as you see Sargent trying to get that nose underneath Finley, he went all the way back to the 10th spot, and he's worked his way back up to third. Boy, Jim was right. The one you might have to worry about the most is Harrison Burton in that 28. That car looks good. A little slide coming off the corner there. Yeah, a little bit but loose that fast. time. Look at that run through the center of the corner for Dalton Sargent. That's where he will make the move. He will try to get that car underneath the 51 of Finley, get that nose underneath there, and then stay even with him down to turn number one. Finley would have to give up that inside line to the 77 of Sargent. Here you go. Is he going to do it this time? Not quite able to do it this time. You can really dip that left front wheel down below the track there. Right in here. Well, they're going to have a slower car in front of them, but you can see him still dip that wheel. Yeah, right now I think Dalton Sargent has the better of those two cars, and Harrison Burton hasn't lost a thing to this front two.
Finley, Sargent, Burton, Eckes, and Herbst, the top five. But these three have separated themselves. Here's the battle behind him. Herbst trying to get inside to take over Ford. Yeah, he pulls his way to the inside of the 15 of Eckes. Nice move by Herbst to move up a spot. Now can he reel in the three in front of him? You see those three up ahead plus the lap car. They've opened up about a half a straightaway on Herbst now in fourth. Looks like the handling has gone away on Christian's car. As he loses another position here. I think three pretty evenly matched cars right now. I believe, though, if Sargent was able to get by that 51, I believe he would be able to pull away from ooh, caution on the racetrack once again. And there it is on the inside of turn four, Munier issues again. Same scenario, gets stuck in the in the grass. That's where he lost it before and caught out the 33 of Tyler Dipple. Now what do we do? We're almost a lap 125. Do we stay out, keep the track position? I don't know. I'm the driver. You're the crew chief. You're <laughs> supposed to make those decisions and tell me what to do. I think right now, if, if you're going to put your four tires on, I think now is the time to do it. I don't think you want to wait any longer. Because you're worried about the weather, or you're just worried? Well, you just these laps go by so yeah. fast, and, and there's so many cars on the lead lap right now. We still have 15 cars on the lead lap. Yeah. And our sixth caution, we put 31 laps. Here they come, Ralph. Into the books and caution period. So our race leader, Finley, goes in, and everybody else said, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs> so Sargent's going to have to make his way a little bit further around. Let's get to Jim for his pit stop. Well, these pit stalls were actually chosen by owner's points, and the teams were assigned the stops. On the backstretch, the preferred stops, because it's on a straighter portion of this curved pit road, is the 77 of Dalton Sargent. He came in second. Finley was actually one of the first pit stalls as the teams dropped in off of turn number four. Four tires is the call for Sargent on the car. No changes on the chassis. Fuel is in. They're good to go there. Just topped it off. And Sargent will just follow out and beat Finley off pit road. And it is a tight pit road back there. Look at Shane Lee. He's the third card line. He's going to absolutely be blocked in. You see Harrison Burton come off pit road. There's Eckes. There's the 55 of Dane Smith. It looks like Herbst lost some positions on yep. pit road. Yeah. See Shane Lee backing up there. Yeah, that was Bo Lamassis in the 42 that made his way to his pit style there. And as he pulled in, there's nowhere for Shane to go. Problems for the 52. That stuff took way too long for Austin. Yeah, he's going to come out the last car on the lead lap here, it looks like. And he was deep inside the top 10. AJ Fike having some work done to his car. Looks like they uh, trying to repair a little bit of body damage. They're using some Barabon on the hood. AJ right now is being shown four laps down. See what happened to the 52 if we can figure it out. Keep an eye on the car on the far right on the first one at pit lane. He was spinning the tire. He was trying to take off. I think they dropped the jack, but I don't think the left rear tire was on. Oh, that's the so it may have fallen off the jack. Yeah. They may not have dropped the jack, but they, it may have fallen off. But that's going to cost him so many positions here. You can see all the lead lap cars lined up going by him. Now on the outside, there's a 41 of Benny Miller. Jim, how about that pit stop? Yeah, Donnie Richardson, the cruise chief, just said, my bad, I sent you too early. So when the jack went down, the driver's obvious indication is to go, and they're now rehashing if they want to come back to pit road to see if there's any further damage when that car did have that hiccup here on pit road. Yeah, Jim, he's listed in 14th position right now, was up inside the top 10. Yeah, no, nothing to lose here to come back on the pit road to make sure everything's okay. You see Benny Miller doing the same thing with the 41. Well battling for position doesn't just happen on the racetrack getting off as well watch this <laughs> i bet you were uh, here we go menards 200 seventh caution we've knocked off 50 laps under caution and we've got 57 to go sun is out don't think we're gonna have to worry about the rain 
Restarts have been tricky. What can Harrison Burton do in the 28 here? Sargent pushes him out a little bit. Hard run into the corner for Sergeant Chad Finley trying to get underneath the 28 of Burton. He's got his nose oh, there. A little bit of contact. Out. The 51 of Finley getting inside of Burton gets him loose. Takes over second, and now Harrison is scrambling to try to get back around and at least stay in front of the 55 of Smith. Zane Smith was strong early on. We didn't see much of him during the middle of portion of the race, but here he is again at the end. And what about Akis in the 15? He's creeping back into the frame, too. Great move by Zane Smith to grab that third spot from Harrison Burton. Looks like Harrison really has a good long run car. Don't know if we're going to have any long runs, though. We still have 54 laps to go, but we've had a rash of cautions here lately. And Roaring is in the group as well. In the 78, he's in sixth. So these guys have all settled down now. They found their spot. Let's see who's got the quickness now to reel back into Sargent. You can see how technical this racetrack is. As Austin Terrio tries to stick his nose underneath the 18 of Herbs, that's a battle for the seventh spot. That is sixth, seventh, and eighth right there. Then you see the 25 of Natalie Decker, who is doing a great job in her debut with the series, still inside the top ten. Doing an awesome job, really, it really is. You can hear, hear how little on throttle, full throttle time these guys have. Very, very technical racetrack. Good battle here, though, for the sixth spot, led by Tyler Roerig in the 78. Nice rebound for Austin Terrio after his problems on pit road. Yeah, he had fallen all the way back to about 14th, and here he is now, running at eight. And there are just 13 cars right now left on the lead lap. Bobby Gerhardt, the five car, is, is in 13th, and the final car on the lead lap. Good move by Herbst to get oh, oh. sideways for Roerig. Herbst did a nice job getting under the 78 of Roerig. Roerig got big time sideways off the corner. Boy, the rear end on that car stepped out. And I thought for sure we were going to be looking at our eighth caution of the day. Still not planted the back end the way he'd like. And the 52 of Terrio has sized him up. Yeah, I think right now Terrio has said, I'm coming. You can either give me room or I'm going to make my own room. Who gets blocked in behind Brad Smith's number 48? Yeah, they're working through some slower traffic here. That was side by side there for a moment themselves. And that forces everybody to change their strategy. And that's Natalie Decker, the 25 car, right behind them, running in the ninth spot. She is on the lead lap, has been inside this top 10 for the majority of the afternoon, doing exactly what a Young, promising drivers should be doing on their debut with the series, getting in the laps, doing it well. Yeah, we talked to her before the race, and she said her goal was to run all the laps and possibly finish in the top ten, and she's right on schedule. The Austin Terrio going to try to make another run at Tyler Roerig here. He knows every one of these positions is critical. Comes in here as our point leader with all four top five finishes in our four races so far this year. There is a race leader, Sargent, 43 to go. Closing in is Finley. Let's go down trackside, here's Jim. The driver who definitely wanted to be in the mix, Shane Lee, a hard lick into the wall. Any warning at all? Are you okay? We sort of, I guess the tank car started on the hole right there for the first. I knew he, I don't guess he had tires on. He was just way slower than the pack. I, I guess it was just a three wide deal getting in and somebody hit him and just turned him straight into us and set us head on into the wall. But overall, we were we were running decent. We just never could get the car to turn in the center like we wanted to to get off the corner. But got to thank the guy that Cunningham and Big Tide enough for having that. We'll get it ready for Elko, then Pocono, then we should be really good at Pocono. But, but on to the next one. Thank you, Shane Lee. Wow, look at how tight things are here as Herbst pushes his way past X. X is right here and takes the spot away from the 15, and that'll move Riley into fifth position. We saw Harrison Burton grab that third spot from Zane Smith while we were talking to Shane Lee. Look at X all over the back of Riley Herbst. 
He's going to grab that spot back. All over the back and then some. Loosened him up. Moved him out of the way. We're going to see Looks perfect. like Riley's thinking about returning the favor. We're getting late here. We tend to give each other a little bit less room when we get down inside of 50 laps to go. Right now showing 38 laps to go. Well, our longest stretch of green flag laps today, Phil, has been 45. Currently, in this stretch, we've done 19, and we've got 37 laps to go. It would be awesome if we could run this thing to the end. Terrio and Rorick still continue to battle for the seventh spot. Caution. So much for the stretch of long green flag. Eighth caution of the day, and it's Earnhardt here on the front straightaway. Okay, that's Bobby Dale Earnhardt. That's another one of Kerry's sons, Jeffrey's brother. Runs the ARCA Truck Series. This is his first start here in the ARCA Racing Series, and you can see a lot of damage to the back of that three car. He's already off the racetrack, so this caution period won't take too long. 35 to go here. Sargent has led 132 laps today. He has definitely been the dominant car. Looks like Christian Eckes was, was close to him, as well as Chad Finley in performance. But uh, we're going to have a very, very critical restart here at the end of this caution period. Working on that left rear. Look top left of your screen, yeah. you see around he goes into the outside wall. Coming right back to Toledo. Alex Avia went three for three, sitting over 380. 380. 380. My Giants are a little beat up, but we're still playing well. Still playing one well. One last night. Yeah. Tigers gaining half out in AL Central. Okay. See you in October. Yeah, striking distance. 29 to go here at the Menards 200. Trying to put a little heat in those general tires and get them ready to go, because you're going to want a good restart. Could be the final restart here. Good here, who comes out with the lead. It's going to be in control of this race. Sergeant on the gas first. Look at Harrison Burton Diamond for the bottom. He's got him. He is, he is there. right up alongside of him. This could be a big move by Harrison Burton. What a great move by Harrison Burton. He parlayed that third starting spot. Got underneath Sergeant. Look at Sergeant. Burton's a little bit loose. You can see him fighting that steering wheel. And that made all the difference, and the caution comes out. Bo Lamastis, the 42 involved. Bo was up on the lead lap, running about the left 12th spot. Looks like he got together with a, with a lap car of Con Nicolopoulos, the zero. Well, that's going to give. I believe Sargent was, was ahead yeah, when the he caution was. came out. Yeah, and I was going to say, that's going to give Harrison another shot at him. Now the spots will be switched. Harrison will yeah. be restarting more than likely on the outside. I think Dalton will pick the inside. Chad Finley now will be back in that third spot for this restart. But that outside lane has not been a disadvantage when it's come to restarts. We've seen uh, twice today, I think, uh, moves from the outside for the lead on the restart. Christian did it once, and I think Sargent got Christian back from him. Exactly. If Harrison can keep Sargent pinched down to the inside, we, we've seen cars get loose trying to get the power down on the inside. If Harrison can pinch him down to the inside, he may be able to parlay that outside re restarting spot into the lead. I think there's just some moisture kicked up onto the racetrack from splashing down into the grass. Jim, how about Sargent? Is he in a good spot here? Is he happy with everything? Well, the discussion continues, guys, when it comes to Sargent's restarts. He was all about protecting the inside line and getting a good jump to get the lead out right going into turn one. I don't think anyone planned on the 28 dipping his nose underneath. But the 77 spotter, Frank Kimmel, calmed his driver down. Kimmel's won here nine times. Now they've talked about how they can take advantage on this restart with Burton next to them without having him get maybe snookered a bit on the bottom. So Kimmel's doing a great job helping this team. Crew Chief Chad Bryant trying to keep Dalton Sargent calm and said, do not spin the tires. We have it in the bag. Cheering their driver on after that strong restart by Harrison Burton. So we kind of have Frank Kimmel versus Jeff Burton here because Frank is talking to Dalton. 
Jeff talking to his son Harrison. Two guys, I'd take advice from either one. Yeah, absolutely, Frank, a nine-time winner here at Toledo, part of his 80 ARCA Racing Series wins. Both of those guys know what they're doing. But both of these young lads here know what they're doing, too. Yeah. So you can get to try to get the tires cleaned off. When these tires are hot and the caution comes out, that's when they pick up the debris. They need to clean it back off. There's Kimber. Oh, boy. We've, we've seen Kim over the years. She's been all this that long emotion. Time. Yeah. She watched her husband all those years. Remember all those pictures with Kim up on the pit box? And now, just when she thought she was all done, when Jeff retired, now she's got to do it all over again because Harrison is certainly a bright young talent, and he's going to be doing this, playing this game for a while, it looks like. Yeah. I remember Kim before her and Jeff oh, got yeah. married, back when Jeff first started running the Bush series. She's been there every step of the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a true racing family, no doubt about it. The general tires all ready to go. You know, you talk about Harrison Burton, and he's seen some checker flags already this year. He really has. He's done an outstanding job. He already got a Cars Tour win this year, and there he is at Bristol. He was in front when the rains came, so he got that win in the k &N Series. Here's Jeff and Harrison sharing that moment right there. And then he goes up to South Boston, where Jeff grew up. Has a great battle with another third generation driver, Todd Gilliland, in that 16, and gets his second win of the year. And could he get one here today in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards? He's going to have to deal with Dalton Sargent, who's been pretty stout himself here today. 143 laps led by the number 77 of the 177 completed. Watch Dalton go through the middle of the racetrack down here in three and four before they get ready for the restart. He wants to have a good angle to get down in turn number one, so he's gonna push the issue as much as he can, get Harrison up a little bit higher. So again, so Dalton has a good angle down into the corner. He doesn't have, wanna have to drive in too flat, too straight. There he is See, right there. He's already taking him higher. You pointed that out earlier, and it has definitely worked for him. Here we go, green flag from Toledo. Great start by Sargent. Burton tucks in behind him. A great start by Burton to get tucked in behind Dalton Sargent in front of the 51, 51 of Finley. Good battle between teammates for fourth. Zane Smith in the 55 and Eckes in the 15. And don't count out Finley in that 51. The top two get to pushing and shoving. He's right there on pace with him. That was a great corner for Dalton Sargent. Did you see he opened up about a car link lead over the 28, and how about the bright sunshine right now? This racetrack's gonna get slick throughout these last 20 laps. Here comes the 52 of Terrio fighting his way back through. That's Trying a battle for the seventh spot, yep. He's got Dean on the outside in the 32. Well, Dean's hanging tough on the outside here. Drives it hard down in the corner. He gives Terrio some room, though. Rorick's back behind them with Miller. Good side-by-side -side fight with less than 20 laps remaining. Good clean battle, too. And you know who else is in that group right behind him is a 25 of Natalie Decker. She's in 11th, trying to get back into the top 10. Yeah, Benny Miller right in front of her. This is a great side-by-side -side battle. Looks like the 52 of Terrio finally gets the advantage on Dean. Meanwhile, our race leader, Dalton Sargent, about a half a second, car length and a half or so between him and second place, Harrison Burton. Remember how good a long run car Harrison Burton has, though. This race is not over by any stretch of the imagination. We still have 16 to go. And we've had nine cautions, so you never know there. Too. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the last thing that Harrison Burton wants right now is a caution. He wants some green flag laps to go chase down that 77. Get some momentum. We're going to come back and settle this one with the Menards 200 in Toledo on FS1. Back for the final few laps here at Toledo Speedway. The glass city of Toledo, Ohio. Dalton Sargent continues to lead. He's led 152 laps so far. Make that 153 as he crosses the stripe. He's got 13 more to go. We can see how much Harrison Burton gained during while we're away at commercial break. He probably 
closed up that disadvantage in about half. And those slower cars in front of them are going to give him an opportunity to get even closer to the race leader. They can get around Basham. And there's Tommy Prater in the nine. Thomas is running in the 14th spot. Well, Harrison Burton is right there, coming down to 11 to go. More traffic in front of them, too. Kim Burton cheering on her son. Now, down here, we've seen Sarge get way down underneath that white line. Doesn't seem to take the same line through one and two. Yeah, that's that's the place to be over there in three and four. You're not quite as low. You see the ripple strips down there in one and two. All right, knowing all of that, here comes Harrison Burton right to the inside. He's alongside. Oh, they made some contact just as they were about to enter into turn one. He had to settle for second place again. Now, he's got to get around Gerhardt's five. Looks like maybe Sargent's lost a little bit here, a little bit of grip here in these last few laps. Good Harrison Burton, some clean racetrack. He think, I think he's got a good shot at it. Oh, he's pushing. He's leading. Here he comes inside. Harrison Burton making the move, taking the lead away from Dalton Sargent. A little bit of a oh. long run, and Sargent does the same thing. They're side by side. Loosens him up, takes him up to the wall. Sargent back in the lead, but for how long? Here comes Harrison Burton clearing him as they come onto the back stretch. How aggressive will this race get with six to go? We talked about it, how good that 28 car was on a long run. I didn't know if that was going to be a long enough run for him to make something happen with Dalton Sargent. And now he's driving away, Ralph. He is. He by far has a stronger car. Sargent, who has been the dominant machine here all afternoon, his car slowing down with five to go. It looks like Finley probably has a better car right now than Sargent, but I don't think anybody is going to be a match for Burton. Harrison Burton on his way to a big win here today. Well, you never know about caution flags here. Remember, Arker will not finish this race under caution no matter what. Sargent trying to protect second place, trying to use some of those slower cars to keep Finley behind him as long as he can. Harrison yeah. Burton with those K&N wins and now potentially on the way to his first career arc of victory. Yeah, it just looks like the 77 has lost a little bit of that forward drive he had earlier in the race. Watch Finley gain on him through the center of the corner here. And off. Two to go. Harrison Burton with a second and a half gap between him and the battle for second place. One lap to go here at Toledo. A couple lap cars in front of Harrison Burton. He should be able to dispose of them fairly easily. It has been a rainy weekend here at Toledo, but the sun is out bright and shining on Harrison Burton, who in his second career start gets his career first victory in the ARCA Racing Series presented by Menards here at the Menards 200 at Toledo. There's Marty Lindley, crew chief, and one happy mother, Kim Burton. Boy, and he earned it, too. He drove the wheels off that 28 in that final green flag run. He sure did. He had such a good car, too. He, had a, he needed that little bit of a long run, and we got that at the very end. Sergeant holds on for second, Finley third. Smith and Herbst will round out the top five. Well, he played the cards right. He waited, as you said and then got up on that wheel and ran him down and worked hard to get by him. Yeah, Sargent had about a six, eight car length lead and all of a sudden it, it got cut in half and then bam, Burton was right on top of him and able to make the move. We're gonna see a lot of Harrison Burton this year in the truck series driving for KBM, Kyle Busch Motorsports. Well, let's hear from his crew chief, Jim standing by with him. Well, Marty Lindley had quite a race. You had said you outdrove these guys today. What was the difference of that young man on those restarts? You know, it was just, first of all, I want to thank Dax Imogen 
for doing what they do for Harrison, giving him this opportunity. And uh, he just, you know, we, the first stop we had a bad stop and got behind, and it kept us behind the whole race. And with all the cautions and the way the race was playing out, I didn't sure we were going to get back. But there's just no give up in that kid. That kid really impresses me. This is the first year I've worked for him, and this is our third race in a uh, row we won, and just really proud of him and our whole team. On that pit box, you lived every lap, every moment with mom, Kim Burton, who's walking behind us now. It's got to be exciting knowing you have that much support behind you as the family. It is. Uh, Jeff and Kim are such awesome people. They treat our teams with so much class, and it's a, it's a privilege to work for Harrison. That's Marty Lindley winning crew chief for Harrison Burton today at Toledo. Well, they're going to have a great celebration here in a moment once he makes his way to victory lane. That's where Jim is headed next. So is Kim Burton. Me and her son over there. Let the celebration begin. We'll be there as well when we come back to Toledo. Time for Harrison Burton to crawl out of the car. Here is the winner of the Menards 200 from Toledo. Just before we talk to him, let's show you the Suit Chief Short Track Challenge point standings. Dalton Sargent was trailing in this category, but had such a good run today. He's not only the leader in this category, he's up by 25. Yeah, it's going to be a good battle all year long between he and Austin Terrio for sure. Go to Jim with our winner. And Harrison Burton high fives all around your back here. Just taking your breath. Take us through those last two restarts and what the difference was for you to get the lead from Dalton Sargent. Uh, you know, the restarts were good, but man, this 28 Dex Imaging Toyota Camry was was on, on point today. Uh, we struggled a little bit on the short run, but once the long run came along, we were just mowing them down, uh, entry center next to the corner. Uh, for some reason, I felt like our, our general tires stay on there longer than everyone else. We could keep, uh, keep the rubber on them with the, the way our car was. So uh, really, really good performance by my pit crew and my guys that, that work at the shop daily. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just blessed to be racing for those guys. They, uh, they make it all happen, that's for sure. There was some short track bumping and running going on. You got the favor back, and then you said, wait a minute, I've got a better race car. Here I go. How hard were you pushing at those last few laps? Oh, man, 110%. I don't know if you can even do that, but I guess we were both doing it, and it, it was a lot of fun, man. It's That's what it takes to win these races is, is everyone going 100, 110% and, and racing for the win. That's what we came out here to do. We're not racing for points, so... We uh, it's a whole lot of fan being, being a part of this MDM Motorsports uh, number 28 team, and uh, hopefully we can move on and win some more races. Harrison Burton in ARCA, a winner for just his second start here at Toledo in the Menards 200. Well, he did a great job. There's Dad Jeff in the background there. Here's our general tire results page. They already talked about the top three. Riley Herbst hung on for a fifth. Christian, boy, he was up there all afternoon. He's going to finish in the top ten, but way deeper than you and I both thought. Yeah, he had a very, very good car and ran up in the top five for much of the races. Tyler Roark makes his debut for Mason Mitchell, ends up with a top ten. And how about Natalie Decker? She wanted to be in the top ten, just missed it, but she was on the lead lap in 11. Yeah, did a super job here. Got a lot to look forward to for her. Very clean race car, no marks on it. And we go down and hear from Dalton Sargent, who's standing by with Jim. Such a strong performance, Dalton, and in those final few moments, it seemed like the car went away just a little bit. What was the difference? Um, overall, I mean, I think we had a really strong 77 big time forward all day, but uh, the guys at Cunningham Motorsports have worked super hard on this car all weekend long, and, you know, definitely a really fun race here at Toledo. Uh, you know, it was pretty intense there with all the lap traffic and everything, and especially that last 15 lap run that we had there with the 28 car, and, you know, Harrison did a great job, and, um, Honestly, I feel like he might have been a little bit quicker than we were all day, but uh, still overall a solid point stay for us. Um, you know, we're going to go home, work on the car, see if we can make it a little bit better and be back at Michigan. Restarts. You and Christian Eckes put on a clinic, and then Harrison kind of got inside of you. There's a lot going on there. How were you able to manage all that with Frank Kimmel in your ears as a spotter? Yeah, he definitely did a, a great job, you know. Uh, he's got so much experience here and, you know, in the ARC Racing Series, so it was awesome to be able to have him helping me out in the spotter stand and uh, pretty crazy restarts there. I didn't know whether the top was better or the bottom was better sometimes, but I felt like I did a pretty strong job there on, on most of those restarts and stuff. And um, overall, you know, it just wasn't meant to be today. Very strong on for Dalton Sargent, finishes second for the second straight year here at Toledo. I thought both the top and the bottom were good on restarts. Yeah, we saw we saw the lead got from both inside and outside, but with good battle. Austin Terrio was able to open up a 110 point lead over Dalton Sargent. But great point battle in the ARCA Racing Series. We'll be there as well, all the way to the finish. It's gonna be fun to watch. Well, it's a good day here at Toledo. Yeah, got glad we got it in. Rain, yeah, yeah, glad we got it in. We had rain early on, delayed the start a little bit, but uh, 
but uh, but a super effort by the arca racing series officials to get that track dry and a super effort by that young man harrison burton getting the victory lane great family memory there picking mom up with the victory here at toledo jim trado and phil parsons i'm ralph shaheen so long from toledo speedway congratulations to harrison barton in his second career start he's got his first career win in the arca racing series presented by Menards.